Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Um, last weekend, right? Last weekend, last Sunday was the first day in probably a decade that um, I took Sunday off. Basically, I didn't look at charts. I didn't look at news. I didn't. I wasn't on social media. I didn't do anything. And believe it or not, that one day, just that one little day of cleansing my brain, just kind of recharging the batteries made a world of uh, difference. So uh, I decided going forward, right? Uh, I'm gonna do this every single Sunday. And after I do the video, there'll be no emails, no social media, um, absolutely nothing, nothing to do with the markets. I'm already prepared for the week. I know exactly what I wanna do. Um, keeping eye on certain different things technically, uh, but overall I'm prepared. And I'm telling you guys, if you're trading, whether you're trading for uh, two weeks, 20 weeks or 20 years, it's so important to take that that day off. You deserve it. You got to be a better friend to yourself, or else you're going to see how quickly this business can burn your you know burn yourself out, uh, and then you'll you, you'll really never reach your your potential if you're always kind of mentally uh, in a fog. And it's very very important to do so. So hopefully you guys uh, are having a beautiful, wonderful day. Especially we're only about a week to ten days away from uh, oh, about 10, 11 days away from Thanksgiving. Awesome time of the year. Um, so let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about the markets. Uh, the market's on fire. I mean, absolutely on fire. Um, the craziest part about the tape is once it goes linear, we started talking about this last week. Once it goes linear, I start going, looking for more value plays. I, I, I kind of start moving away from the hot stocks, to, you know, after a big, big move. And I start looking for the plays that are coming off an intermediate bottom, off of a longer distribution to take out a previous range. And if you look at what happened this week, I mean, just an insane, same move, just every single time. If you look at, matter of fact, if you look at uh, Thursday's update, right? If you look at Thursday's Friday, uh, Thursday's uh, video into Friday, we talked about these lower sets of lower highs, right? And, and I kept on saying, if it, it, as long as it stays above here, we're fine, right? You got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. But you can see by, you can see the way I was approaching Friday session, I kept on saying was, oh, I still want to be bullish, right? I still want to be bullish, but I'm just still so wary about a potential rug pull. And again, it, it's just, it's the same theory as we've been saying for years and years. You know, you have to have an opinion of what's going on. You absolutely have to, um, because again, the market is is full of surprises and will throw you a curveball and you'll wind yourself on tilt. And it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be uncertain. That's 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 all measures taken for safety. Uh, than being blindfolded, rose-colored glasses, and you know, and having your, your account swiped. Um, and you, you got to give the bulls a great, an amazing job. I mean, absolutely amazing job. Not only are the bulls defending areas, you know, again, because Friday they could have easily taken down this 10-day moving average went lower. You got to give the bulls credit, man. People are just hand over fist chasing these stocks, and it's the most amazing thing. And when you look at moves, for example, like Roku, right? Roku was good right here. Roku was good right here. Hell, Roku was even good right here. And right over here was a little bit overextended. If you guys remember going into Tuesday session, I was saying, you know, I still like Roku off that 42, uh, that, that uh, what was it, that uh, 36, 37 level. I go, just be careful. It's, it's you know, the, guy, the stock has gone already from 18 to 32 in three days. And this thing just kept on going. So monster moves there. Tesla just continues to be a beast. Uh, from, from where Tesla broke out, from that, if you go back a couple of videos, from that 318.30 level to the confirmation of like 331.32, I mean, we're having this conversation now at 352. So you're, you're getting some really, really aggressive buying, and that's great. But what I've noticed, what I've noticed, and I started taking, you know, mental notes, because again, there's something called the fear greed index, okay? And years ago, probably going back, 15 years ago, okay, not 20, because 20, I still really didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yeah, hell, I didn't even know what I was doing 15 years ago. Um, but if you go back, right, you, you, when you're a new trader, you can't gauge the fear or the greed index. You don't, you don't understand it because what you see in front of you, you think is normal, okay? And years ago, what would happen was if I was on a good run 
and I just wouldn't pay attention to anything else just by the stocks just kept on going higher and higher and higher. I would keep on pushing and pushing and pushing and then I'd find myself, um, I'd find myself with a really ugly loss, like a really, really ugly loss because again, I didn't get the theory and traders didn't get the theory that gravity is very, very real. Just because you're not a, being affected on it right now doesn't mean it won't happen. And it took me, it really did take me, you know, I'm doing, I'm going on my 21st year now. It really did take me about 12 to 15 years to kind of figure that out. And as a market gets linear, right? Uh, and the same thing to the downside. We talk about uh, the upside moves, eventually buyers get tired. And on the downside moves, when the market goes linear down, eventually the sellers get exhausted. And when that happens, right, and you start getting more clues, that's when you get a really, really aggressive reversal. Because again, there's nobody left, okay? There's, it's, it's all, you know, people already ate all the meat off the bones, just licking at the plate and crumbs. And again, like I said on Thursday's video, nobody says Armageddon is coming. Hell, I don't even know if this market's ever gonna come in, allegedly. But what we're seeing now, right, what we're seeing now is the greed index at all time highs, okay? Um, you know, I, I, tweeted, I tweeted something out a couple of, you know, a couple of days ago, I go, hey, you know, we're starting to put in lower highs in the queues. You just might want to, again, nobody's saying Armageddon, nobody's saying the market's going to destroy. Just keep an eye. Just make sure technically the, the, the market doesn't come in. And the response I got from two or three people is, what are you, crazy? Why would the market come in? Da -da -da -da. Okay. That's cool. I, you know, obviously I understand your level of experience trading because again, no trader that's been trading at least a decade would ever say that because again, we know how vulnerable we are and we know how gravity is real, but it's okay. Okay. It's okay. The most important part is kind of going into this conversation is not where the market is, is where some traders are finding a lot of success. Now, there's an old adage. If you guys, if you, if you guys have been trading for even a couple of years, you kind of hear this. Um, if you have a really bad day or if you have a, a really bad run, you got to have a short memory, right? Short memory, clear it out in your head because what's going to happen is if you take your bad day uh, and you don't, you know, you keep on dwelling on it and harping on it, it's going to spill over to the next day and spill over to the, five, the day. And that's terrible, right? It's a terrible way to do it. And it's very, very hard. Again, that's one of the hardest things to do is take a horrible day and just kind of forget about it. It's easy to say, right? It's easy to say, oh, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. You lost X amount of dollars. You had a horrible day. Oh, don't worry. Just, just shut it out, right? Shut it out. We're, we're human beings. It's very, very tough to shut it out. But it's necessary and it has to be done. And it gets much easier to do so uh, once you're doing it year after year after year. Again, time is always the greatest uh, teacher. Experience is always uh, the greatest form of education. But the one thing that nobody talks about and what we're seeing now with the greed index at all time highs is what the hell do you do when you catch a wave, right? And because Roku is having, you know, especially I mean, Roku, especially Roku and Tesla, but Roku, especially when you have a stock going from 118 to 160 in five days, okay, there's going to be people that really did catch this move. Like we had people in the live webinar, even like, like for example, Larry tweeted out, he goes, my God, I made like 300%. On. Yeah, absolutely. When you're riding Roku for four or five days, you're going to have something magnificent happen, right? It doesn't happen all the time. It's magnificent. So unfortunately, and this is, and this is something new traders don't know because nobody ever sat down and told you, of the longer you trade, eventually you're going to catch a really aggressive wave. OK, and between Roku and Tesla and Apple, right, these are monster, monster waves. OK, these are huge, huge waves. When you're catching these trades, right, and you're catching these trades, you start to think this is normal. OK, you start to think that this will always continue. And, and what happens is subconsciously you're really building up an incredibly bad habit. OK, and what happens, just like all drug users, right? All those people who pop ecstasy pills and Molly and all that crap, right? Cocaine. What happens after you come down on your high, right? And you have no supply of narcotics left. You start going into depression, right? You start, you know, you start getting itchy. You start, you know, whatever crackheads do. I have no idea. Whatever crackheads do. But that's the same theory, okay? You're coming down on a high. And eventually, okay, when the market starts contracting instead of expanding, you're going to think the wave that you're on right now is normal. And this is the fastest way, the absolute fastest way to give back most of your gains in a very, very short period of time. And this is very, very dangerous and it's as important, okay? And I can't stress this enough. It's as important going every single day as it's new interval, okay? It's like, the, again, the theory that I've been saying for years and years and years, okay, you could have, you know, you could have um, a Verlander come in and pitch a no hitter right? One day, beautiful, striking out 15. The next day, 
some guy, Joe Schmo, who's the fifth starter, comes in and gets bombed for 12 runs in the inning of the third. Trading is momentum is as only good as the next day's starting pitcher. So momentum is only good as the next day's value. So yes, the expansion channels, are they helping you? Okay, if you're a new trader right now or even an experienced trader that hasn't really got to that point of understanding this, if you're on a wave and you're seeing candles just expanding, 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 expanding every single day, and you're looking at your account and you're dumbfounded, how the hell did I just make you know X amount of percentage of my account? How did my account just double in two weeks? Oh my God, this is so great, this is normal. And then what you, what you don't realize because nobody told you is this is not normal, okay? The majority of your career, you're going to grind out. You're going to have contraction days. You're not going to have 15, you know, $15 ranges in three days in a $100 stock. It just doesn't make sense, okay? Well, you win uh, with an Amazon or a Google. We'll talk about Amazon in a second. Something's definitely wrong there. Um, but, the, but, but the faster you understand that this is not normal, okay, the sooner you will go into the next trading day really starting to play defense. Again, if you're on a magical car carpet run right now, that's fantastic, okay? With this type of market, I'm, 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 I'm really seeing many, many people on this ride, but you have to kind of reconfigure your thinking. Going into Monday morning, if you get a big gap up, again, in your position, you've been riding it for two weeks, you know, maybe take some downside protection. Okay. Again, the last thing you want to do is kind of just say, no, 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 it's still going to go high. It's going to go to 200. Well, the stock has just gone from 118 to 160. Do you really think it's going to go on a straight line? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But at some point, you have to start protecting your profits. So if you are on this magical carpet ride and you're riding these stocks, at some point, you need to turn around and say, you know what? Maybe Dan has a point. Let me be safe and sorry. At worst case scenario, my next leg of my profits will be minimized, but at least I'll have downside protection so I won't give this back, right? So I won't give a good chunk of my profits that I took me two, three weeks to develop. It'll put me in a situation of safety first, and then I can reevaluate just in case the market does do a dramatic rug pull. So yes, having a short memory when you're in a bad funk is incredibly important. Easier said than done, but incredibly important. But the, again, the most dynamic part of trading, and I said this all the time, the longer you trade, right? Not talking about two weeks, three weeks. The longer you're in this business, you're bound to catch a wave. And I know a lot of you guys are on this magical carpet ride right now. Again, take a step back, okay? You don't need to lose half of your account to figure out what I'm saying is right, what I'm saying is rational. Again, does the market need to come in? It doesn't need to do anything, okay? I've been watching this thing. I say to myself every day, holy crap, it just doesn't want to confirm to the downside. And again, I, I could be wrong every single day in my... In my, uh, in my interpretation, again, it doesn't affect my trading. I'm still going to trade to the upside. But again, for all you guys on the ride, guys, just think about what I'm saying. You don't need to do it. But again, like I said, the greatest experience, okay, the greatest experience is having it done to you, okay, uh, and you don't need, okay, because again, I, I'm, I'm telling you what's going to happen, okay, eventually it's going to happen, whether it's tomorrow, the next day, the following day. Gravity is real. If you don't pay attention to it, you will give back a lot of your profits. And again, that will mentally really damage you. So start taking a proactive role and what you think is going to happen next. So let's talk about the tape. Again, uh, the market is just bananas, absolutely bananas. Uh, yeah, it does look like we're going to 205. Again, it's pretty basic technical analysis. Um, you're long until, you're long basically until, or again, with some reason, you're long until the queues start losing the two hundred day, uh, the two hundred dollar uh, area, which is the rising ten day moving average. So you have to again, every video I've done this week in the last three weeks have been the same thing. You got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt until the buyers start to get tired. Again, just when they look like they're about to go tired, the market just keeps on going higher. So that's cool. The China news, uh, phase one in jeopardy, phase one not in jeopardy. Who gives a shit, right? Market's still going higher. Again, it looks like we're going to rally towards the end of the year. But again, like I said, we never know. We don't have a crystal ball. All good in the hood right now, as my mom says, no news is good news, and that's how the market uh, is behaving. Uh, again, the, the market is really good. The only stock that's not acting well is Amazon. It, it, just something wrong with the stock, okay? Absolutely something wrong with the stock. Um, four days ago, uh, we had a pivot here, okay? We had a pivot from this uh, 1766 level, and I said, hey, well, you know, if this thing starts cracking down, I think it might, you know, it might test that you know, 1750, 1752 level. What are you, crazy? It's Amazon. It's going to go to three. Oh, okay. Okay. Settle down. Um, something's wrong. I mean, absolutely something's wrong. And, you, and you're saying to yourself logically, we saw some calls come in on, on Friday 
Uh, I believe it was the December, I could be wrong once, but it was the December 1820, 1825 calls. They came in, you know, you figure Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that crap. And the stock just, just, just started going lower. I mean, just absolutely started going lower. If you look at, you know, if you look at where the calls came in to where it's, it just started, started really, really breaking down. So there's something wrong with the stock. And the, the funny thing is, if Amazon starts losing this 1730, because you can see now it's below this Bollinger Band. The only reason it stopped where it did on that 1749, 1750 level off that pivot, I think it was on Monday or Tuesday, was the Bollinger Band. This thing went below the Bollinger Band. And if this thing confirms 1730, right? I mean, look how much room you have to the downside back to the 1700s. So there's something wrong. I don't know what it is. Uh, everybody loves Amazon. It's a machine, right? Everybody's going to use it for holiday time. Something's wrong. For the rest of the markets, absolutely bananas. Uh, Tesla's a beast. What are you going to say about Tesla? The best stock ever. Roku, uh, Roku again, Disney, Roku, um, just a match made in heaven, right? Just an absolute beast of a move on Roku. Again, it's, is it overextended? Way overextended. Does it mean it's going to go down? No, right? It doesn't. So again, it has to, you know, again, what happens is on Monday, uh, that 58 level, okay, if it gets rejected, then maybe you have a case uh, for a trade off this Bollinger Band back to the downside. But until it doesn't, I mean, you have to think rationally, the stock is so over, uh, so overbought. But again, who the hell knows what, what's going to happen? Uh, Netflix, you know, here's the deal with Netflix. Every single time, and I, I, I caught Netflix a bunch of times this week, but every single time you look at Netflix, you say to yourself, I just can't believe this thing doesn't want to break out. And just when it's about to, right? Just when it's about to, again, you had your uh, Citron top with Citron. You know, you guys saw what Citron did. You had your Citron top that went from literally uh, 298 uh, to 281. You had all that stuff, right? And this was this was a big, big crosshairs victim of the Disney Roku uh, kind of relationship, the ESPN Plus and all that stuff. And it looks like this week that Netflix will finally start to wake up. And again, we'll talk about some ranges here in a second. But you could see it. You could see it. there was a nice pivot. On Friday, we'll talk about that in a second. Well, you can see this thing wants to wake up so bad. It really does. Had some huge option flow in the last several weeks. Um, this thing does look like it wants to set up. So barring any more Disney Roku, God damn it, enough of these headlines. You're affecting Netflix. Um, yeah, this thing could run. This thing could run. If it starts confirming upper channels, you could see a move to 301 to 303, maybe even to 304. Uh, so I, I like this going into this week. Uh, Boeing has been an absolute... Uh, monster, not the easy stock to trade, but I, I, like I said this in the live webinar, you're either in this thing or you're not. This, is, this doesn't trade like Tesla. This doesn't trade like Amazon. doesn't trade like Ali. It just, it's its own mind. But again, very, very bullish. We'll talk about uh, where potentially this thing could actually wind up. It looks absolutely great. Again, if you have a little bit of patience, uh, you might see a pretty, pretty big move uh, there as well. Uh, Facebook, again, starting to wake up. Again, a, little, a lot of work to do. There's still a lot of supply. Uh, Apple has been an absolute monster. Again, linear, absolute linear move. Again, the value in Apple is not here, here, here. The value in Apple is here. The value in Apple is here. You know, it's, it's here. So this is all blue skies, and this gets very, very dangerous. Uh, Alibaba, um, Alibaba, you could tell it's like one day away, one or two days away from clearing out the supply. And if it does, it could wake up as well. Uh, Square, just a big move on Friday. Uh, really, really big move on Friday. Traded exactly uh, where I thought it was going to trade. It's very, very close to busting out um, as well. So you can see it's just a really good take. NVIDIA uh, is the only casualty that I think probably goes lower and starts seeing the 196.94 uh, area. So let's talk about Let's talk about the pivots from Friday. Uh, again, aggressive day. You, again, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to trade beta to, to trade these pivots. Okay. I always try to put, uh, I always try to put as many names uh, as possible, at least for the people, especially in the Twitter feed uh, that, that have nothing to do with Tesla, have nothing to do uh, with Amazon. Sure. I put, you know, some of the beta names in there, but again, DDOG had nothing to do with, with, with Beta, neither CTIS, neither DTIL. Uh, Sirius Logic is not really a beta stock, but a good looking move is there as well. So it's very, very important, guys. Just again, you don't need to trade Amazon. You could trade a $30 stock. Hell, you could trade a $12 stock, right? DTIL, what does that have to do with it with beta? So it's very, very important to understand that. Trade whatever you feel comfortable. Not what I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable trading Amazon. I feel comfortable trading Tesla. If your account size is not there and your level of experience is not there, there's no way you're going to benefit from my comfortability. So it's very, very important to engulf the process, embrace the process, but use it for your tier stock. So let's talk about uh, Friday's session. Um, again, here was the pivot on Thursday, 367. 
367 on Boeing, uh, built right above it, uh, closed above it, 367, 370, big areas of interest if it builds, could explode. And again, I still, still like this trade. And Friday, you saw a pre-market 370, 371. If it, it needs to build off that, that base, tons of upside, and you could see a channel 385. Now, the reason why I say 385, and I got a couple of emails, and again, you can see how it closed above this 370 channel. The only reason why it stopped, it put in a high that uh, on Friday of 73.48. The only reason it stopped was the Bollinger Man. Uh, this Boeing starts reclaiming this 374 area. Everybody see you guys? And for you guys are at home, right? So here's the high here, 373.80. Here's the high here at the Bollinger Band, 373.48. If, Bo if Boeing starts getting above that 74, I think here's here's where the 85, where I got, uh, where I got that 85 uh, measured potential, 85 and an 88 uh, measured potential on Boeing. Uh, CRUS, again, beautiful chart, uh, beautiful, beautiful chart. Again, it's not, it's not something that I'm going to trade, but again, it's a beautiful chart. This is the, uh, the, the highest close in this formation, right? It traded up to uh, 73.50. Look, can you get to 78 if the market continues to be good? Yeah, I, I, okay, yeah, I get it. If you're swinging it, right? If you're swinging it, just use the previous day's low as your stop. Again, a lot of people over sensationalize what swing trading is. If you're long a stock on a daily confirmation breakout, okay, you're just using the previous day's low as your stop. Don't overthink it. That's all it is. Okay. If you see here, right, there's a reason why stocks put in a higher high and a higher low, right? As long as it doesn't take out the previous day's low, you're good to go. So series still looks good. Uh, DDOG, I actually traded this DDOG. Don't ask me why, but I did. Uh, DDOG, uh, nice spike. Nice spike. It didn't follow through like I thought, but nice spike. We bought it through the 42 area. It almost went to 43. Nice, you know, nice, nothing wrong with that. Again, this is not Tesla. I'm not looking to make two, three, five points on this thing. It's just the scalp. So uh, nice cash flow on DDOG. Um, NVIDIA. So check this out. NVIDIA was acting kind of weird pre-market. And I knew that 212 was that huge area. And look where it stopped, right? Look where NVIDIA stopped, right? It stopped on Friday, 1170. Again, these pivots are very, very precise numbers. Thank God it stopped 1170. It didn't trade above 12. Or else we got caught, we got caught in this thing. So again, the whole theory is again, another quadruple top here. Um, I like it on, I like it going into uh, this week. Uh, I either like it either a gap up into 60 minutes supply. If you're an aggressive trader, uh, green to red, if you're an aggressive trader or a confirmation below uh, 200, which is here, which could go to 96, we get 94. Just understand, guys, again, I say this all the time just to reiterate the point. Green to red is not a pivot. OK, it's just momentum. So, again, if you are trading, make sure you have a very specific plan of action uh, to curb your risk. But I, I like the video more to the downside. Uh, CNST, you know, not a bad move. Uh, again, twenty nine dollar stock. How much you know, how much do you want to expect? Put up a 70 cent move there. Uh, BYND, you know, I traded BYND three times this week and I, to the long side and I felt dirty every single time, but it was actually some pretty decent trading in D, uh, BYND. Um, here's the deal, right? The stock got rejected at supply, right? Never got, obviously never got back to this 8350. If this thing starts losing, right? If this thing starts losing the lower channel here on the 60 minute, this thing's going to go lower. Okay. This thing's going to go lower. So, you know, I'm going to watch it to the upside channel. I'm going to watch it to the downside channel. Now that it's uh, completely easy to borrow, hey, you know, again, whatever doesn't go up must go down. If you look at uh, the daily chart, you kind of see that. If it loses the five day moving average, and again, that's the shortest term uh, sentiment. If it starts losing the five day, it's going to go right back down. Uh, to that 73 low. So we're definitely watching BYND this week. Uh, DTIL, uh, small caps, well, smaller price stock I put into the channel, uh, $12 break, $12 needs to break. So here's DTIL from Friday. Um, here's DTIL from Friday, broke that 12, went to like 12.39. Again, 40 cent move on a $12 stock. Okay. Not bad. Okay, not bad at all. Square was a monster. Square was an absolute monster. Uh, 63.30, uh, 63.40 needs to build. Uh, I said there's a puncher's chance this, gets, this thing gets to 65, and you can see the 60-minute chart, right? Here's a 63.30, right? 63.30, 63.30, 63.30, and the stock exploded and went right to just a tad under 65. Uh, I still like it. I think if it just gets above the supply here, it goes uh, it goes higher. Uh, Apple is just a, just a linear beast. I mean, there's nothing you can do. It, it, again, it's just a linear beast, 64.90, 65 needs to build. Uh, here was Apple, right? Here was Apple. Uh, here was a 64.90, cleared out all that, and it went to pretty much the highs of the day, uh, pretty much the highs of the day of 66. Uh, Netflix was good. I caught some Netflix, uh, 292. 
uh, 292.30 needs supply to reclaim. Uh, big move on Netflix. I, I, I have to believe this is a week, man. I have to believe this thing goes. So here's the 292. Uh, here's the night. Where was it? Right here. 292. No. Where the hell was it? Uh, 292, no, it's 293. Here, 292, here's a sneaky pivot, 292.30s. And it went to it went to almost 96. Um, you know, I have to watch it this week. I, I want to see this whole area here. Okay, I want to see this whole area gets taken out. If it does, it could go back to the Citron highs of like 98 and change. And if it takes that out, it could go to 301, 303. Um, AMKR, I kind of like. Uh, for all you guys who are not uh, beta lovers, you could, sell, you could see it got rejected here again. At this 1340 level, if this thing, if AMKR can just start reclaiming 1340, 1350, uh, this thing can go. It's some pretty decent option flow on this thing on Friday. Uh, yeah, like I said, take some on the way up. He's break even stop. Uh, 95 potential went to 96, but it is what it is. Serious highs on deck. And Peloton, Peloton, uh, $28, uh, $28 break IPO highs needs to build. And Peloton towards the end of the day actually gave a cash flow trade, traded almost up to uh, 29. So, you know, solid. I mean, definitely, definitely solid. Again, I am I am cautiously optimistic going into uh, tomorrow's session. Again, it's a bull market uh, till it's not. And that's the name of the game. So let me give you guys some ideas for uh, let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow's session. And then we will start enjoying our weekend. Um Crowd. I like this crowd. Uh, CRWD. Let me give you guys some non-beta names. Uh, CRWD. Strong move. Absolutely strong move. Uh, two ways to play this thing. Either a dip into rising 60-minute uh, support, which we'll discuss uh, in the morning strategy, or a break above, uh, or a break above the 60 level for a possible initial move to 62. Uh, laser. Don't know what this thing is. Don't care what this thing is. Technical analysis. Technical analysis. Same thing. Uh, you're either looking to buy this thing into rising 60 minute support, or you are looking to buy this thing above Friday's high of 2090.21 for next move up. LK, same thing, right? LK, same thing. Just, I mean, you can see how crazy this market is. Again, these are not really the stocks I would trade, but man, man, if you if you don't trade beta, how do you not trade these things? Again, another perfect example of a rising 60 minute support buy uh, or a break above Friday's highs of 2730s. That looks good. And let me give you guys one more PDD. Uh, and I give I give my man Derek uh, in the room. Oh my God, this guy trades it so damn well. PDD is just a beast of a trader, uh, especially when you what you guys don't see on social media, when you guys don't see on the Twitter feed. There's all these bounce plays that we play in the live webinar uh, off the 60 minutes rejection, off the 60 minutes support supply. And Derek, man, just to give this guy a shout out, has been trading for a year and a half. Uh, he, he's taken his account for literally from like 7,500 bucks. To over the pattern day trading rule, and he trades these channels perfectly. He he like PDD is like his baby. That's and all you guys in the live webinar you kind of see this. He literally buys it off supply, uh, off support, and, and sell shorts it off supply. Like it does very very well. Technically, it looks great. Some good option flow coming in on this name. Uh, if it could reclaim a new base and start building forty three, there's a shot it goes back to uh, the highs of the day. And yeah, just Amazon, man. There's just something's wrong, man. Something's wrong. In case they do pull the plug in the market and Amazon starts building below 1730, you do have measure potential to 1702, even 1687. So there's something wrong there, but everything else we'll talk about at the Twitter feed. So guys, I'm going to go recharge. Here's my Sunday off. Uh, wish you guys nothing but love, success and health and happiness. And the most important part is just be happy. That's it. Just be happy. Live your life. Because again, there are no uh, mulligans. Have a great week, everybody. Have an awesome trading week. And with God's help, we'll see you on the field tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.